Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see each one here today. We say God bless you. If you're glad to be here, say amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to go right into prayer. If you would, turn to your neighbor this morning and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. We're going to uh, go right into prayer. And uh, we have still have several people out that sick today. We have some with the flu, but uh, Linda Mastera and others have other physical problems. Let's remember all these this morning as we pray. We do have one more week of fasting and prayer with our church. And so let's continue to do that as well. Amen. Amen. One more thing. Would you turn at your neighbor, smile really big and tell them this is a friendly church. Amen. This is a friendly church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. As, as opposed to non-friendly. Amen. If you would repeat after me and say, this is the best day. And the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. One more time. This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's join together. Let's pray for our service. Let's let the Lord have his way. Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, once again, we ask your blessing upon our service this morning. We ask you to bless the music portion of our service. We ask you to bless the evangelist and the spoken word today. Lord, we ask you to stir up the gifts of the spirit and the power of God in our midst today. Lord, we're looking to you, and as we enter into this new year, Lord, Lord, your word declares that, that you will abundantly bless us in this new year. Lord, your word declares that you're always with us and you'll never leave us or forsake us. Lord, your word declares that you defeated all principalities and powers on the cross. Lord, your word declares that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, your word declares that not only in, in any given year, but every year that you bless us and minister to us. And we thank you for that. Lord, may you encourage each one that's here today. Lord, we lift up all those sick in body today. Lord, all of our friends that are not here today, we ask you to touch and heal. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And Lord, as we've come this morning, we've come to worship you and to give you the glory and all the praise and, and, and honor. And Lord, today as we submit to you, we bind every devil, every hindering force in the mighty name of Jesus and we loose your power and your anointing and blessing in this place. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor. We ask these things today in your name, the name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give him one more clap offering this morning. Let's worship the Lord and let's give him glory. And let's help Monica today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands one more time to the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, and we honor you yet again. And we thank you for your presence, Lord. Your word declares that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we thank you for that. We give you the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Thank you for having your way in our midst, Lord. Thank you for stirring up the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God. Thank you for... Lord, your presence, Lord, and all the things that you do. Lord, we praise you. We honor you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise and bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We honor you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise and bless the wonderful Wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you and honor you today. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you for the good things of God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. 
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more time this morning, would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it? Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. And let's give Monica a hand. Tell her thank you today. We appreciate it. Bless you. You can be seated this morning if you would. We're glad for each one to be here. Uh, we want to thank um, uh, Bruce and Brian, and we actually, Victory Outreach helped us too. We have now uh, hooked up downstairs our uh, TV. We have the computer hooked up in the Internet, and our children now can watch all the Christian programs that are online. So that's wonderful. We just got that fixed. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're thankful for Victory Outreach too. We, we have this new uh, tent next door. And during the Santa Ana, they had to tie it to the picnic tables. <laughs> or it might be in <laughs> uh, Pico Rivera by now or something. Amen. But we're thankful for all of you that are here today. And we say, God bless you. We thank you for God's goodness. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive our morning tithe and offering. This goes to the expense of our church. A little later on, we'll receive a love offering for our evangelists. Amen. We're glad that you're here today. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be here. Lord, thank you for one more time to worship you. Lord, today, once again, we ask you to bless the offering, bless the gift and the giver. Lord, minister to the needs that are represented here today. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we are depending upon you. Lord, your word declares that you crown the year with your goodness. Lord, that you always supply our needs. And so we thank you for that today. Lord, we are believers and we are not doubters. And we're trusting your word. And we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. We ask these things today in your name. The name of Jesus and everyone said. Amen. Amen. If you have an offering, please bring it to the storehouse of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you. And I'm going to ask my wife to come and give our announcements. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We're on the last week of January, so it's the last week of our fast. Now, Pastor and I fast different things for the month, so I get to sit and watch him eat brownie cake with ice cream on it. And I don't do it. I pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So whatever you're doing, keep it up one more week and God will, you will see a blessing. We always see result from this annual fast that we do. Uh, let's see. As I said, we're finishing up. We do have in just a few minutes our very, very special guest, Carol Dickey, joining us. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, we are putting together a 24 hour prayer chain. We're still constructing that. So contact Sister Sharon with your choice of when you would like to be praying. Also, while you're talking to her, you can update your phone number, address, and add an email to your information if you like. And just to let you know, we do not sell your information to anybody else to get a profit. Okay. <laughs> It's just for the church use. Praise the Lord. Uh, Teresa, can you come up and share about children's ministry? Again, we're so happy to have technology down there for their, our kids. You know, we got to keep up with the world, but keep them in the spirit. Here's Teresa. And that's what I'm excited about today. Boy, I get to go down here and we get to go visit some places, the Garden of Gethsemane, a few different things I'd like to show the children. It's just always fun that... Um, when we're talking about these things, to give the kids a visual, to take them and show them that these are real places. They actually do exist. And uh, I know that was a turning point in my life. My grandma took me to see a documentary about uh, Noah's Ark. And I was just amazed. I went home and got into that Bible, and I was like, oh, my goodness, there it is. <laughs> and, and it was just so amazing to me. And I like to do this for the children, too. And another thing is that we're all different learners. Some of us are visual. Some of us, you know, auditory. It's a different. Everybody's different. And so I like to bring in um, different varieties of learning, and this will definitely help a lot of us. I love our children. We do have an aquarium trip. We've moved it from February to March. We have a 
baby shower that we're going to be doing. And uh, we have a zoo trip that we're going to move from March into April. So <laughs> uh, when the time comes, when it starts getting closer, I'm trying to pick a date that is going to work well for everybody. So um, be looking forward to that. To just keep our kids in prayer and me also. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Teresa. Um, yes, on February 14th is the Ladies' Fellowship at 1030, and it's going to be a baby shower along, as well as fellowship. And then that will be followed by a rehearsal of the praise team, more than just Monica. <laughs> you can practice that day, Monica. No, <laughs> no, the others will be here. We can get through this flu season. It's pretty rough. Also, ladies, heads up, heads up, heads up. May 2nd is the mother-daughter banquet. So start thinking about it. Start saving. I'm going to bring menu and uh, all information to the February 14th Women's Fellowship meeting so we can all get together and, and talk about menu options that we will present. We will be going to a restaurant. Hallelujah. And we will be keeping the cost down. Hallelujah. So I'll have more information at the Ladies' Fellowship meeting. Let's dismiss those kids to Children's Church. Give them a hand and a prayer as they go. They are our blessed blessed blessing from Jesus. Here's Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We've got lots and lots of kids. And here's another one. Praise the Lord. I want to I want to personally thank everyone for your support in prayer. I've had lots of people tell me that they have been praying and been consistent. Uh, Friday was our day to pray for Foursquare. A lot, and everyone, we tried to text as many as we could, so we know lots of people were praying for Foursquare on Friday. So we thank the Lord for that. We have one more week. We want to continue to pray. Amen. And we hope that this helps you also get into good habits. And if you will learn to pray in the morning or in the evening or both, it will help you uh, in your Bible study and prayer if you'll read a little bit with that. Um, I always like to say that uh, one-tenth of your day is two hours and 24 minutes. And if you could take one hour and 12 minutes in the morning to pray and one hour and 12 minutes in the evening to read, um, it will really help you spiritually in your Christian walk. If you will read just three chapters a day, you can read the whole Bible in one year. That's all you have to read is just three chapters. So it takes consistency, though. Uh, I know people get through January and they get into February and all of a sudden they're not doing it anymore. But it's not something we do part-time. This is something we do all the time. Come on, we're Christians all the time. And if we can discipline ourselves, we'll be able to do more and more and more. And lots of people would be very much benefited if they knew what the Bible said. Amen. Everything in it. Amen. Even all the so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. I didn't think that was important still I, until I wanted to know who were the family members and the children of God and who belonged to who and what they did and that sort of thing. And I found out these guys are important. So I had to go look them up and find out who's who, whose father was who, and who were the children and what they did in their life. And when you're reading a story in the Old Testament, you'll find out they're in there and you'll find out what they did. So it's important and it will benefit you. Amen. And when next time someone preaches on somebody you never heard of before, then you'll know who they are. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Smiling. Everyone smiling. Don't let anybody know you don't know that. Amen. Just keep smiling. Amen. Anyway, we have one more week. Please continue to pray with us. And uh, it always benefits our church. Amen. Amen. We do have one or two visitors today. Let's give all of our visitors a nice... Warm welcome today. We're glad that you're here today. And uh, we are privileged once again today to have Carol Dickey in service with us today. Uh, she's been here before, and so now she's one of us. Amen. And uh, she's going to come and teach and maybe sing a little bit and minister the Word of God to us. And so let's open our hearts to the wor Word of the ministry and to Carol Dickey today, and let's let the Lord bless us today. Amen. God bless you. First of all, it's great being back with you guys. I love being here. It's like my little home away from home. You have great pastors, and Monica, you did a great job. 
It's really hard to stand up here by yourself, and you look beautiful today with your little dress and everything. I just wanted to say that. It's, it's not as easy as you think, right? Yeah, I thought you did a great job. Yeah, you did a great job. And um, it's good to be with you in the new year. I don't know about you, but I'm glad last year's gone. Okay, you had a great year. Mine wasn't as good as yours. I'm really glad it's gone. As a matter of fact, the Lord gave me, well, I, I had a sermon about the new year, new beginnings, and everything. It was a good sermon. I liked it. Uh, but the Lord told me no. He woke me up um, a few days ago and gave me a specific word for you guys. I mean, a prophetic word. So we changed my whole sermon and everything. But I do still have a little song that I want to sing um, because I want to declare something that um, I believe this year is a year that we will see unanswered prayers answered. That's what I believe. I believe some things that we have prayed about for 20, 30 years maybe, that this is going to be the year that we're going to see a breakthrough. I really, really do. I feel like there's, uh, even this morning the Lord spoke to me, and here I'm going, I haven't even sung yet, and I feel the Spirit of the Lord. I felt like this morning the Lord was saying, there's just an open heaven over this church. I really, really mean that. So when I sing this song, um, you'll understand it when I sing it because I'm really declaring something. So we're going to go ahead with the first one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so excited about Jesus. That's all I have to say. I'm just so thankful for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful I got that through that song, the Santa Anna's you're talking about. Really hit me hard. And I thought, well, if that ends up in Pico Rivera, I live near over there. I'm just going to pick it up for you and bring it back. But um, praise the Lord. We can trust the Lord. Amen? Amen? We can trust the Lord with our yesterdays, our todays, and our tomorrows. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So as I said, I changed my... Um, my message, when the Lord woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning, I don't understand why he can't talk to me at noon, but, um, no, he talks to me all day long. Um, but when I wake up with a special scripture for a specific church, I know I write it down, and then I go back to sleep and then <laughs> until it's time to get up. But the Lord really did speak to me specifically. So I'm going to pray, and we're just going to get into this word because God has something for you guys this morning. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that never returns void, Lord. Thank you for your promises that are yes and amen, Lord. Thank you for the good things, Lord, the good things that you have for this church this year, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you for them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to 1 Kings the 17th chapter, we're going to start in verse 1. Verse Kings 17, 1. I recently changed versions of the Bible to the New American Standard because evidently my son who's in Bible school at Christ for Nations uh, told me that this was the official version that they go by <laughs> and instructed me that that's the one I should be preaching out of. That's okay. And uh, so 1 Kings... 17.1. How many got it? Okay, all right, I don't want to leave you behind. Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. Verse 2. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go away from here, and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. It shall be that you, shall, you will drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and lived by the brook, brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he would drink from the brook. Okay, so we see Elijah... This is before that there's a drought, as we all know of, and this is beginning, really, pretty much the beginning of his ministry that we see written here. And so he's proclaimed something to Ahab, and the Lord says, okay, go, you're going to go to this brook, and I'm going to feed you there. I'm going to command the ravens to come and feed you, and you're going to drink from the brook. 
And it says specifically, I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. You see, there is a place called there. There is a place called there. There is where the Lord has established a place of provision. It can be emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, or all of the above. But there's always a there. Your particular there may be different from my particular there. And they may not look exactly alike, or they may not look as you have imagined it to look. I'm sure in Elijah's wildest expectations, he never thought he was going to be fed by ravens. I'm pretty, pretty sure that um, that's a surprise. And no offense, but what kind of food were they bringing him? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you're going to have bread and meat, but where did they get it? I mean, I just have to wonder how the Lord did it. But they did. Twice a day, they came and they brought him food. So, as I said, the Lord specifically woke me up a few nights ago to give me the premise for the sermon, specifically for this church. I've never given the sermon before. This is a word for you. And I, I'm thankful that the Lord um, is mindful of us. And I'm thankful that this is a word, I believe, specifically for your church at this time. You see, there is a place called there where the Lord positions each of us to receive from him. And receiving in him is supernaturally receiving from him. You know what I'm saying? There's a place there where he supernaturally provides for us. It's a place of provision. It's a place of rest. Notice Elijah was able to rest by the river. He was able to regain his strength and his perspective. He was fed by the Lord physically, mentally, and spiritually. That is what there looks like. A place of rest, rejuvenation, sustenance, provision. And I believe what the Lord showed me is that this place is your there. Come on now. Somebody's got to give me something. here. This place is your there. This church, this place, this is where the Lord has ordained for you to receive from him. Now notice that Elijah stayed there until the water dried up, and then we see later on in verse 8 um, that in verse 8 the scripture says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. See, so now the Lord has changed his there. Okay? But for that time, that was his there. There's always a there. The key is to follow the Lord where our there is. Yes. Amen. Amen. If Elijah had gone to the widow first and then the ravine, I'm confident that the outcome would have been different. Not only did he not obey, but by that time the water would have dried up. You see, there's timing. There's perfect timing with God. And we need to always... Follow the Lord where he calls us, when he calls us. There's a season for everything. And we need to be sensitive to that. See, sometimes we get impatient and we want to skip a step because we may not like the step. What if he said, well, Lord, I really don't want some leftover food that some bird is going to bring me. I'm just going to go straight to the widow. Well, they both would have starved and the, then he would have gone back and the water would have dried up. It would have messed up the entire plan because he would have wanted to skip a step. We get impatient and we take what we hear from the Lord and we manipulate it until it looks like how we want it to look. But here we see that if Elijah had not pursued his there in the correct sequence, the outcome would have been totally different. He not only wouldn't have been provided for, but most likely the widow wouldn't have even he may not have even met the widow. See, he met the widow in a time of drought, right? So her need came out of the drought, which originated from the fact that the ravine dried up. We need to be careful to remain there until the Lord calls us to go to another there. We need to rejoice in our theirs. 
and not try to uh, manipulate another position. That's not only applicable in this church, but on our jobs, in our lives, in our relationships. Sometimes we jump the gun. And I have a perfect example. I had to learn the hard way. I really had to learn the hard way because I have a tremendous imagination. I can dream the most outlandish things. And um, they're not always from the Lord, <laughs> I have to say. I've learned over the years. And um, I will say that when I was in college, before I went to um, Bible college, I was in secular college studying psychology and journalism because I was going to be a journalist. And I went for a job interview, and I walked into this place, and I did not like the look of the place. They offered me the job. I turned it down, and I walked out. Um, a few months later, I got another job interview. I went back, and I realized when I was sitting there, this is the same place. This is the same place. So now what do I do? I'm, I'm interviewing with the same person. And I'm thinking, I hope he doesn't remember who I am because that is embarrassing. I've already turned down this position. Here I am for the exact same position. And it wasn't like some exalted position. I'm 18 years old, so I'm in there for a file clerk position part-time while I'm going to school. So the boss comes in, and he offered me the job again, and I sat there thinking, well, there must be a reason I'm here. Even though I did not know the Lord, I was not saved. So I took the position. So I started as a file clerk. Within a year, they moved me up to the head typist because I can type really fast. Then they moved me up to um, bookkeeper. So now I'm a bookkeeper. Oh, okay, that's not bad. You know, I'm, I'm making okay money. But I really didn't like the job. I really didn't, I, well, I can say that. I like being a bookkeeper. I like numbers because I'm a musical person and numbers is just my thing. I like numbers. But I didn't like the nature of the position. I worked for a collection agency. Well, it was just distasteful. <laughs> and people would lie, and they're mean. Collectors are mean. And I'm not even as an unsafe person was I a mean person. But being in that position, well, as I was a bookkeeper, in walks this girl that they hired to take over my position as file clerk and typist, whatever. And... Um, She's ultimately the one who led me to the Lord. Okay? So that's, this is now my there. Because the Lord has provided me with somebody that's going to lead me to the Lord. You have to understand, I'm a lifelong Catholic, and I never, ever had anybody tell me that I needed to have a personal relationship with Jesus. As a matter of fact, I was talking like I knew something about being Catholic, and she said, do you, have, do you know Jesus as your Savior? And my response was, of course, I'm Catholic. And she said, no, have you ever had a personal relationship? And I said, what does that mean? And she said, you have to ask Jesus. She showed me how to get saved. I remember taking the bus home from that job, thinking, I hope this bus doesn't get hit because I will die and go straight to hell. I just, it was that clear to me. It was that clear. I got down on my knees in my bedroom and got saved that night. Okay? She discipled me for the next year. And when I say discipled, I mean she didn't let me out of her sight because... I think she was afraid I was going to go back. I was, I was a wild Hollywood girl, okay? They could count on, on one eyelid about nine different eyeshadows that, you know, how many can I fit in this one square inch of eyelid? I was pretty wild. And um, so she literally picked me up for church every week, every Wednesday, every Sunday, completely out of her way, took me to a church, made sure, and after a, a year, she said to me, Carol, I'm, a, I'm confident that I, and she did, she did a great job of discipling me. She said, I'm confident you're not going to backslide. And, and so she said, I'm going to let you, it, actually, she was taking me to a Hispanic church where they spoke only Spanish. She said, it's about time you went to an English-speaking church since you're English-speaking. And I said, okay. And um, she dropped me off at Angel's Temple. She said, this is in your church. Go meet somebody. And, <laughs> and she quit quit the job. And I said, why are you quitting your job? She said, because Carol, my assignment here was you. My assignment wasn't to be a file clerk here. My assignment was you. So that was my there. It provided for me spiritually, but I still didn't like the job. It was a hard job. I didn't like it. It was, I didn't like anything. So I quit like a year later and go and went to work somewhere else. 
And um, they wanted to promote me and everything, but it didn't, I, it just didn't, I don't know. I, I came back to visit somebody at my old job and my boss saw me then. He really, my boss loved me. Best job, best, best boss I've ever had and I've worked for pastors. He wasn't even saved. That's all I'm saying. Um, he was just so kind to me. He, he said, Carol, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm working over here. I'm an office manager. And he said, you know, I have a position open. I think you'd be great for it. It's to be a collector. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a collector. He said, well, you're such a good typist. I figure you could just type your own letters. It's just small claims. It'll be easy for you. I said, oh, okay. All right. So I went back. I got a raise. I did it for one month. And God blessed me so much that after a month, he promoted me to a large claims desk. I doubled my salary in one month. That was my there. You'd think I'd learned. About eight years later, I did the exact same thing because I wanted out of there so badly. Every time I had to pick up a phone call and pick up phone and say, hi, I'm calling about your whatever bill, I cringed. I hated it, hated it, hated it. Yet I kept getting promoted. I was in charge. Now I'm a, I'm a supervisor. I'm in charge of all these people. I'm making great money. I quit again to go work somewhere else for another doctor because he hired me and he said, oh, you're going to make all this. And my boss still sent me flowers at work on my birthday and he was just so nice and I didn't really like, the, the, the doctors, they weren't very nice and they were Christian. They were very nice. So my boss said, Carol, please come back and I'll give you another promotion. So I said, you know, I think this is God's will. I went back. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is I was there 16 years, okay? 16 years. I started at 18. I left at 34. I didn't leave until the Lord called me into full-time ministry. And that took, okay? Within a year after I left, the company was bought out and they closed it. But what I'm saying is that was my there. I didn't want that to be my there. The whole time I was there, I knew that God had ministry planned for me. So the two times I left, it was to go work for a doctor's office where I could minister to people and lay hands on the sick. I love laying hands on the sick and, and help people and be kind to people. Yet twice the Lord moved me back. And I kept saying, you don't know what you're doing. I want this to be my there. And he said, Carol, this is your there. Many of us do the same thing. We have a certain idea in our mind, and it, does, it didn't mean that I wasn't called to full-time full ministry. I completely was. My timing was off. In the middle of it, I get married. I have two kids. I'm making good money. Put my husband through Bible college. All the things that where God blessed me. I was 25 years old making $65,000 a year with no don't even know how I got it. And I turned the job down the first time. You see, I think sometimes we miss where our there is because we don't like the way it looks. We don't like the people there. We don't like this. We don't like that. And believe me, I'm talking to myself because I had to live it. You know how humbling it is to come back twice and people say, uh, and you're like the only Christian there now, okay? It's like, what happened? I don't know, God called me. It's very humbling to tell them you were wrong. But God continued to bless me. And I'm encouraging you today. Wherever your there is, I know this is your there, but there's other theirs in your life. And you may want to say, you know, don't like the way that looks, don't like the way that feels, don't like that person. I'm going to change my there. No matter how good your intentions are, the outcome will be the same. You will only be blessed where you're there is in that season. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't jump the gun. Don't be like me. The Lord spoke me when he spoke to me when he woke me up and said, God was going to use this church and you as a people, collectively and individually, just where you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to do anything or fire anything up. I'm telling you, just where you are. You may be small in numbers, but you are great in the kingdom. He said that to me. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm telling
telling you, I sing a lot of places and measure a lot of places. There are big churches where the people are this deep in the Lord. And there are small churches where the people are this big in the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, but when I gather and dig in my for, in well for some water, I don't want it just to go down this deep. That's not going to fill me up. I want a bucket full. Okay, this is your bucket full. God will use this church despite whatever you think or anyone else thinks. I want to direct your attention to um, a couple other scriptures. I'm not going to read all the scriptures to you prior to this, but I'm going to give you a gist of, of what's going on. We're going to eventually go to Acts, the fourth chapter. So I'm going to set up the, the stage for you. In Acts 2, we know that the disciples who have been waiting on the Lord have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? They've been waiting on the Lord. And now, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, they're preaching with such eloquence and power that thousands are coming to the Lord. Thousands. People are being healed. People are being delivered, set free. We see um, right before this scripture that they are arrested and thrown into jail for proclaiming the gospel. Now, the Peter that's arrested and thrown into jail this time is the same Peter who denied Jesus because he was afraid. So what happened to this Peter? He's afraid to just even admit he knows Jesus, and the next moment he's preaching to thousands and getting thrown into jail, and he's standing firm. What's the difference? The Holy Spirit. That's the only difference is the Holy Spirit. The same Peter. And now he's standing so on fire with the Lord that even the Sadducees and the Pharisees are gathering to marvel at his words. Okay? So we're going to come to the scripture, Acts 4.13. Now, as they observe the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. They saw Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated, untrained men. But they were amazed and recognized them as having been with Jesus. They were amazed. Although they knew they were not formally educated or trained, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. You see, the difference was that they had been with Jesus, and that makes all the difference. You see, that is what the Lord is going to do with you. This is what the Lord spoke to me. As you feed and expand in your relationship with the Lord in your there, it will not matter if you are formally educated or trained. It will not matter who you are or who you know or what you know, other than the fact that you've been with Jesus. Okay? There's no program for that. <laughs> Being with Jesus makes all the difference. And they marveled. They marveled. Because they said, what's different about these guys? The only difference is they've been with Jesus. See, that is what you're there is providing. A place to be with Jesus. And I don't know what more you can ask for. So your pastors have spent time with Jesus, and it shows in how they pastor this church. And you will grow in your relationship with Jesus here. You will prosper here. You will expand here because here is your there. Amen. They have not paid me to speak this sermon. <laughs> I'm telling you what the Lord said to me at 5 o'clock in the morning. He gave me these scriptures specifically. Now, I'm not against knowledge. I love to expand my knowledge. As a matter of fact, Danny and I love trivia. We, we would play Trivial Pursuit. And uh, you guys remember that? We've been married a long time. It's probably an old game. But we would put, and we would, it, it was to the death. It was the game of death with us two. Because he knows a lot. But I know a lot. It's just we know a lot in different areas. The only way I'd ever lose is if I got a sports question. Because I don't know anything except about deflate gate. Because I saw that on Fox News. That's the only reason I know about that. And if there's a good-looking quarterback, I probably will know his name. But other than that, I do not know anything about sports. 
And uh, we, would, we would fight over that last little wedge to put in that pie when we did any. And I would be mad at him for days if he bit me. I love trivia. I take all of those tests on Facebook. How many of you take those quizzes? I take those quizzes. I love quizzes. I love tests. Probably because when I was growing up, nobody ever asked me my opinion. So now I just give my opinion everywhere I go. Facebook, sure. What Disney princess am I? I'm Aurora. Great. I mean, that's how I, that's how I feel. I love I love stuff like that. I love learning things. If I see something on TV I like, if I like a star, I will go look them up. Well, what's their story? Because I love meeting people. I love people. I love understanding. Because if I can understand the small things, then I can understand the big thing. Okay? Like, even when I was being trained for jobs or whatever, they'd say, just, this is the end result. Okay, that's great. How did you get there? I want every tiny little step, because if I know every tiny little step, I will always get there. I like to understand things. So I'm all for education. I'm all for knowledge. I'm all for all of that. But nothing can replace being with Jesus. It, it, I can memorize full books of the Bible. But if I haven't been with Jesus, I will not know how to apply them. Amen? Come on. Some of those, I want to say, um, educationally ignorant people I know are the best preachers ever. I, I'm, I'm serious. Because they know some stuff only Jesus told them. <laughs> I'm really serious. I know this is a place of prayer. I know your pastors have spent time with Jesus. And wherever a pastor, believe me, I go to a lot of churches, the personality of the pastors filters into the church. What's important to the pastors is always going to be important to the people. Some are mission-oriented, some are, you know, um, evangelistically oriented. Some are all kinds. They got, you know, seeker-friendly oriented, all this. They're prayer-oriented. Even the fact that you're going to have a 24-hour prayer line, come on. That's, that's a huge undertaking for anybody, okay? You're not the Crystal Cathedral. Good thing, because they're, they're closed. <laughs> I'm saying prayer is important, okay? So, you will prosper here in just being with Jesus. And like I said, I love trivia. I love, I love knowledge. I'm a lifelong learner. We, as pastors, even on our, our license application and renewal, we have to say, where have we gone? You know, I did chaplaincy training. I did this seminar. I did this. I read this book. You have to, to be relevant, right? You have to. And hopefully it helps to see the big picture and culturally and so on. But I want to say something. My son, as I just said, is in Bible school now. His first year of Bible school. He has two BAs because he kept running from God. And um, finally answered call, God's call to ministry, so he's in Christ for Nations. Great school. Great school. He's meeting so many people. He met Dutch Sheets the other day, and Kenneth Copeland came. And I mean, he didn't meet him, but I, I'm just saying a lot of people are there, and um, they have the greatest teachers, great teachers. But he was recently home to come home for my birthday, and the difference in him was amazing. I'm ab absolutely jealous of the things he's learning that I never learned in Bible school. It's awesome. But the funny thing is, is and I don't know if you've ever seen this, but young pastors like this and Bible students, they're really on fire. And they're going to tell you how to get saved. Unfortunately, I've been saved for quite a while. So we had a lot of discussions, and we were able to get into some deep discussions because now he understands some of it, and um, some he doesn't understand, but a lot he did. We were able to have some really theological discussions. And we were discussing um, all the learning and applicable instruction and so on and so forth. But I'm going to tell you something. With all his zeal and all his new knowledge that I didn't learn, from, I mean, creationism, and I, I just didn't learn any of that. I remember we had a Dr. Hackett. I don't know if you, he was a big pastor in Foursquare, wonderful pastor, wonderful preacher. But he was convinced there were no dinosaurs. So we'd have Pentateuch, and he'd say, it'd come to, you know, creation. He said, no dinosaurs, we're not going to talk about it. And he'd just move on, right? So Chris, Christopher had a whole semester on creationism and and. What, what does that entail and everything? Wow, well, you know, my, my teacher just said, no dinosaurs, just move on. 
and we didn't get to talk about anything. It's just a difference in style. But I'm going to tell you something. With all his zeal and all his knowledge of stuff that I didn't take in Bible school that was not required, nothing will exchange the fact that I've walked with Jesus for 35 years. Nothing will change the hours, the days, the weeks, the years that I've been on my face before Jesus, crying out to him. Nothing will change the miracles I've seen. Nothing can change the healings that he's done in my life. Nothing can change just the daily walking with my God and my Savior. Nothing will change that. When he comes out, he's going to be, believe me, he's probably going to do more for the Lord than I've ever done. That may be the only thing that God put me on the earth for was to have this child. <laughs> he's, I think he's that great. But right now, nothing can exchange the fact that I've been with Jesus. Nothing. And that's what you have that no one else has. I don't like to say nobody else has, but that's what sets you guys apart. You're very unique in that respect with the emphasis that you place on being with Jesus. Even your pastor said, you know, two hours, a tithe to the Lord. I never hear that anywhere else. But, you know, like, oh, we'll start with five minutes and you'll be okay. And I'm not putting him down because you got to start somewhere. But I'm saying, you just, I'm just saying, I'm seeing where the emphasis is. So I may not be, you know, know the newest methods. But I, I'm telling you, I've walked with Jesus hand in hand. And nothing can uh, replace the hard times that, He's seen me through. You see, that's what you have. Don't ever let anyone, including the enemy, remind you of what you don't have. You do not need a degree to serve Jesus. You do not need a doctorate in divinity to have a relationship with Jesus. You do not need a master's to make a difference in your community. And that's what the Lord showed me. The two specific scriptures was this was you're there. This is where God has provision for you. And not any, don't let anyone tell you that you're less than what God has called you to be. Because that is a lie from the enemy. I'm just going to say it. That's a lie. The Lord has clearly shown me that this there is a place where you can be with Jesus. And the world is going to marvel at you, at what you can accomplish individually and corporately, simply because you have been with Jesus. Revelation 12, 1, 11 says, And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They didn't overcome the enemy with education. They didn't overcome the enemy with money. They didn't overcome the enemy with anything that is valued uh, by the secular world. And I'm going to also say, I think it's interesting, it's their testimony. You see, it doesn't matter how long you've been with Jesus. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter about a lot of things, socioeconomically or anything like that. We all have a testimony. And our testimony is different from everyone else's testimony. And people can argue scripture with you. They can argue all kinds of things, but they can't argue with you about your testimony because that's your testimony. When I started in the ministry, I had nothing but a testimony. I'm going to just say it. I think I mentioned it before, but um, I got saved. I left um, my secular bi uh, college, went straight into Bible school about a year after I got saved, didn't know anything. I had just found out, if you can believe it, I want to say this, but she, your, um, your children's pastor was just saying, you know, oh, she was floored when she saw the actual Noah's Ark, you know. Um, I was in the foyer evangelist temple one day, and God had already called me to Bible school, and I was just ready to get going, and they mentioned that the rainbow was God's promise, that there would never be another flood, and I was like, really? I didn't know that. Okay, you have to understand, I was Catholic. We don't have Sunday school in Catholics, okay? That's all I'm saying. I didn't know anything. If I didn't see it, Charlton Heston didn't do it in the Ten Commandments. I didn't know anything about it. I'm not kidding. I am so not kidding. And here I remember standing there thinking, oh, my gosh. 
I am so embarrassed. And they're looking at me like, you're going to Bible school? I mean, maybe you should go to Sunday school first. And then you can go to Bible school. I remember feeling so stupid. I mean, so stupid. So I thought, oh, well, okay. I just knew what God said. I don't know what to say. I got saved, and all of a sudden I got a word from somebody that was going to go all around the world and preach. And I was like, what? I didn't know what to say. I had one Bible. It's one of those family Bibles. That's the big, you know, leather one. This big 20-pound Bible in my lap trying to read. And like, why are these words in red? I knew nothing, 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 okay? So I go to Bible school, and I, as I said, the Lord healed my leg, and he healed me one night. And the next night, I mean, the next day, everybody knows about it because heat's coming off of my leg, and next thing you know, they're saying, hey, can you go on the radio? And I'm saying, sure. And then, hey, can you come over here and give your testimony? Sure. So I'm giving my testimony and people getting healed. I had a ministry before I knew anything. I barely found out about the rainbow people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I barely found out about the rainbow. Like that Skittles commercial, Catch the Rainbow. I hadn't even caught that rainbow yet. I'm so serious. And here, I'm speaking and saying, oh, you know, I got healed when you were talking. What? And I was so green. I was like, that's great. I thought that was a normal situation. I thought everybody just got healed like that. Because, well, why not? I don't understand. If it says it, they got healed. Well, why wouldn't you get healed? I'm like, great, that's great. You know, I really thought it was an everyday thing. Just so what I'm saying is, is that I had a whole ministry and I didn't know anything. I mean nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nothing. And of course, I went to Bible school, thank God, or you'd still have me standing up here and I'd still be talking about a rainbow um, after 35 years. Did you know the rainbow was from? <laughs> Like, yes, we found out when we were 12. But um, the point is, is that God can use anybody. Do you know what I'm saying? I made a difference. People were getting healed and everything, and I'm some dumb little kid from Hollywood that just got saved out of a horrible life, don't know anything except that Jesus saved me and he healed me, and people are getting saved and healed. It's only who you know, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Okay, I'm going to finish this right now with um, a song. And um, I'm specific not just to sing a song. Um, I'm, I'm very careful what, what I do when I'm ministering because I want it to only be the Lord. But I feel like this song is good because the grace of the Lord, and that's what this song is about, is all over you guys. Do you understand what I'm saying? The grace, the grace, the grace, the grace that passes all understanding, the mercies that are new every morning. It's all over you. It is. And I want to be here to encourage you that God has a specific plan for you guys, individually, corporately. Whenever you leave to go to another there, wherever God has called you to eventually, you will have a foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will have a foundation where you can say, you know what? I, I drank from the brook. I, I was fed by the Lord himself. No other explanation except you were in the right place at the right time because that's where Jesus had you. So can I just encourage you as I sing this song? His grace, his grace, I'm going to declare it right now. His grace is all over you. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace, his grace, his grace. Let it permeate your very soul this morning because his grace is abundant in your lives. You may not even see it because it's right here in front of you. Sometimes our perspective can't get the whole picture. But I'm telling you, his grace is covering you in this place in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you for your word and your promise, Lord. There is an open heaven over this church, Lord. You will continue to feed and bless them miraculously, Lord. And you will use them, Lord, because they've been with you. And Lord, I specifically want to pray for their pastors today, Lord God. I pray 
for you to please open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them that they cannot even contain, O oh God, abundantly above anything they could think, hope, or ask, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that this year, unanswered prayer is going to begin to be answered. I believe it, Lord, and we thank you for it. Seal what you've done today, Lord God. We just thank you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy that? Say amen. With, with Carol's permission, I would like to do this. I feel like I need to do this today. I would like to invite you to come as many as would. And I don't know where you're there is, but we're going to pray that you're going to be the best person for that position that you'll ever be. So would you come on down? Let me pray for you. Some of you are a little hesitant to witness. Some of you are a little hesitant to go out there. But let's pray that God will bless you and give you the courage and the faith to get out there and do what God called you to do. Come on. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on down here. Come on. Come on. Let's be a witness for the Lord. Let's do what God called us to do. Amen. Let's, let's do it. Amen. You can't do it like someone else does it, but you can do it like you do it. Amen. You, you be what God called you to be. Amen. I love what Pastor Dan says all the time. So many people are born an original and die a copy of somebody else. I don't want to be a copy of somebody else. I just want to be what God call me to be. So if it's all right, uh, everybody, Carol, everybody, let's just start here and let's pray for them and let's, let's, amen. And while we're praying, don't stare at us. You pray too. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we agree for healing, Father God, in Jesus' name. Yes, every nerve, ligament, tendon. Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, healing and strength today, God. Yes, Lord, strengthen it, Lord. Make it work better than it ever did, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I really, really enjoyed that today. Amen. I want to tell just briefly a little story. We're going to receive an offering uh, this morning. Um, I was asked by some of the people at where Linda works to do a funeral for uh, this lady. She works at the college, her husband. And I knew the lady, and she was not a Christian. And so before I, I do services, I'll try to get as much information as I can. And come to find out, this man was um, semi-disabled, and they would send a lady from, I don't know, one of the social services to help him and assist him. Well, they sent the wrong lady because she's Pentecostal. Amen. She witnessed to this man and he got saved. Hallelujah. He got, he was a Christian. Yeah, right at the edge, at the edge, just before you get there, his wife wouldn't, you know, they, they were really hesitant. I was probably the only minister that they even knew. And so before I did it, I just was amazed at the Lord. Um, I'm telling you, God is a good fisherman. He is a good fisherman. He can catch anybody. He can catch anybody. We had one instant over by our old church on Cucamonga where there was uh, a man called the church and he at no time wanted anything to do with our church. And this was long before I was ever a pastor. And nobody wanted to go talk to this guy because he was mean. So they said, send Brother Jess. Brother Jess will do it. And so I went to the hospital. 
And I really didn't do anything. I just took hands with him, and I just told him what to say. And he liked to broke both of my hands while he prayed. But he prayed the prayer of faith for himself. And the nurse called the church the next day and said that man had a wonderful afternoon, evening, and a morning. And the next afternoon he went home to be with the Lord. He was a Christian for 24 hours. But I didn't know that. I, w- I would have no idea, and nobody else would have known that. But sometimes the things that we do can lead someone to the Lord. And, and I use the expression, sometimes I have to come in the side door or the back door or <laughs> some other way to try to get in to the person, but someone else can go to them with that, that they'll receive and they, they are used of the Lord. How many want to be used of the Lord? I want to be used of the Lord. Amen. And, and preaching from the pulpit is only one small way that God ministers to people. There's lots of, lots of different ways to do it. Amen? Amen. I feel like I've been to church today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to receive the offering um, uh, for Sister Carol, but if you're making a check out, please make it out to Rock of Faith, and we'll issue one check at the end of the service. Amen. Would you one more time smile at your neighbor and tell them, This is a friendly church. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for this wonderful service. Lord, today we ask you to bless the offering. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Lord, some way, somehow, return it to your people. We'll thank you for it. And Lord, thank you for this wonderful service today. We praise you and give you the glory. We ask it today in Jesus' name and everyone said, Amen. If you have an offering, please bring it to the storehouse of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if we got a chance to do this. We got one more, Leon. One more. Uh, Bruce, can you help us with our website, uh, with our up to date on our website, please? We didn't do that this morning. Sure. On YouTube, uh, we're coming up to our one year anniversary, which is February the 5th. We will be on YouTube for one year. We're currently up to 3,000. 247 views. So we're doing great. Um, France is still our number one country this week, along with South Carolina is our number one state. So we're doing good. Our website's up. I encourage everyone to look at our website. We have a lot of pages for it now. Uh, Things from the pastor. We have a calendar, we have children's church, we have a new donation page that accepts people to make donation or ties on our web. We are high tech. <laughs> I also today just made a page. If you do not have a YouTube account and you want to be notified that our services are up, you can send us your email address. I send out a, essentially a newsletter saying our services are live. We also have uh, Facebook and Twitter simply to allow more people. However you want to be notified, we will, we will do it your way. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we are getting letters and calls mostly, most calls or texts that people are watching the broadcast or whatever. But anyway, it's nice to know that we're helping other people. And the famous expression we have at Rock of Faith is so many people will text me back, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. So I know they, they're they watching the service. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. And if it's all right, I'm going to ask my wife, would you dismiss us this morning, please? Amen. God bless you this morning. Greet someone before you leave and tell them you're glad they came. God bless you.